Hello and welcome back. Logic takes a backseat in today's Dr. Hollowed episode, as we explore mind-boggling events that have left people scratching their heads. Dive into these mystifying tales, and make sure to hit like and subscribe. So kind of paranormal, but when I was growing up, my dad was obsessed with Civil War history, so family trips always consisted of going to battlefields. On this one trip, we went to Antietam and stayed at a B&B that was an old farmhouse that was used as a Civil War field hospital and was owned by an officer in the Confederate Army. Everything was fine until about midway through the night, when my brother and I woke up to my mom panicking in the other room. She basically jumped out of bed and ran to wake us all up. When we asked her what happened, she explained that she was having trouble falling asleep due to how cold the room was, and this was the south in the summer, mind you. Then, all of a sudden, she was convinced someone was waiting outside the bedroom door, so she called out, thinking it was my dad or something. Moments later, she felt something standing over her in the bed and frozen with fear that my mom couldn't move. She started to get tucked into bed, like the way your fingers press the bedding tightly around your body. After the tucking, something brushed her cheek and then was gone. The room was warm again, and my mom lost it and jumped out of bed. We went to check the bed, and there were visible tuck marks, like the outline of my mom's body, present in the bed even after she had gotten up. To this day, it's something in my family that none of us can explain. We all saw the tuck marks, and we even have photos of them. My dad swears it wasn't him, and my brother and I were sleeping in the same room, so I know he didn't do it. My high school sweetheart died when I was 19, he was 22, while mountain climbing with friends. He was my everything, and I was, of course, devastated. I had left MA, just moved to California, and I was a broke college student. I couldn't afford to fly back for the funeral, and I had no financial help. A year later, a good friend was to be married and asked me to be her maid of honor. By then, I had a few bucks and could afford the trip back home. Everyone knew that, along with Dawn's wedding, I needed to visit Dan, so our friend drove me to the cemetery. We searched and searched and couldn't find his headstone. The weird part happened as I dejectedly walked back to Elle's car. It was like a fog came in, and I kind of blacked out, I guess. And yet I was totally conscious, I know how nuts it sounds. What happened next is Elle's version of the story, I reached out to place my hand on the car door handle and stopped suddenly, turned around, and started running. She said I was really running back towards the cemetery and dropped to my knees. All of a sudden, there I was, standing at Dan's grave. It's been three decades, and I can still feel him reaching out to me from time to time. I don't know how we could have missed it originally, we literally looked for hours. When dad died, we had a simple graveside service. My sister and I were standing there feeling sad, and a seagull came down and walked in a circle around the group of us. My dad always enjoyed feeding the seagulls with us when we went to the beach. It made us both smile to see that bird. It reminded us of happier times. For years, we joked that dad, who was a quiet Norwegian man, sent that one seagull to tell us he was okay. He was always a man of few words and sent just one lonely bird, lol. Many years later, mom died. My sister and I went home to take care of things. Mom was cremated and wanted her ashes spread in Puget Sound. We took her ashes to all the fun places we went as a family, sprinkled them there, and remembered the good times. We felt like she was with us, laughing with us at the happy memories. My mom collected seal and otter figurines, and we joked with each other that maybe she would send a seal or otter to say goodbye. But where we went, we had never seen either creature, and it was just a wistful joke. We were all done sprinkling the ashes and were walking on the late ferry back to the mainland. It was dark as we walked onto the pier. My sister heard splashing and looked over into the water. An otter swam into the area, lit up by lights on the pier. Then another. And another. There were seven otters chittering and looking up at us. We stood there counting otters and laughed and cried. It was just for my mom to assemble as many otters as possible. So that's my story of how my parents told their daughters goodbye one last time. All true. Maybe just a couple of coincidences. But I have lived long enough to have seen other things I can't explain, so I accept this gift I can't explain gratefully. This didn't happen to me, but to my dad. He started getting pain in his leg with no apparent cause. Now I need to stress out that my dad is hardcore, so if that man says he's in pain, he really is in pain. Anyway, doctors couldn't find anything, hospitals couldn't find anything, etc. The pain only got worse and worse, and he started having trouble sleeping and even walking. We visited several specialists, but nobody could find anything, and my dad was about to lose it due to the constant pain he was in. Despite all that, 
He went to his greenhouse every evening to water his plants. Due to a sudden sting of pain in his leg, he lost focus and accidentally sprayed water on an industrial power outlet. The shock sent him flying into a wall. Luckily, he survived, and guess what? The pain in his leg was gone, and it hasn't returned since. Just like that. This happened to my dad a long time ago, in the 80s. He was on a holiday to a coastal area in Spain with some friends, going out, getting drunk. He left the party before his friends to go to sleep in the car. When he woke up, his head was resting on a fountain in the middle of a square on market day. Confused and hungover, he asked in French, he doesn't speak Spanish, which way to go to the coast? 15 kilometers was the answer he got. Somehow, in about two hours, my dad got from his car at the coast to a town 15 kilometers further, and he still doesn't know how. He found his friends again by dumb luck, and they didn't understand either. It was too far to walk in that amount of time, and I was certainly drunk. And he has no memory of getting there at all. He figured maybe it was a prank by his friends who drove him there, but they claimed they didn't. To this day, they still don't know how he got there. If it were his friends, they would have told him by now, but it's a mystery for all of them. My wife and I got stranded in Reno 1.5 years ago as our car started having issues. We were on the north side of town and chose a Walmart as the location where we were going to crash out. It was 1.30 or 2 a.m. and we went into Walmart to buy candy and a couple window shades, and it was so incredibly busy as if every tweaker in town was flailing away there, leaving the parking packed. We went out to the car and went to sleep. We woke up the next day and tried to figure things out, but nothing worked out, so we went back to park at Walmart for the night. It had just turned midnight, and we were walking up to the doors to get a snack. An employee walking out stated that they were closed and that we would have to go and leave the parking lot. I stated that we had stayed there in our car last night and asked why they are open 24 hours a day and close at midnight on others, to which we were told that this particular Walmart had never been 24 hours a day and it always closed at midnight. We looked at each other as if it had to be a joke or something, but the parking lot was nearly empty, and employees were all heading to the cars that were in the lot. I still had the receipt from the night prior in my pocket. 2.12 AM we never saw it open after midnight again. I had this old guy who claimed to be psychic. He never used it to make money or try to trick people or push anything on them, but he would just say some crazy stuff sometimes. He wouldn't come into our house at the time, he'd always wait outside because he said it was full of bad energy, like someone had been killed violently. A year later, as we are painting, we strip the bathroom door, and there's a huge, somewhat round, head height, deep blood stain with splatters. When my mom was pregnant with my much younger sister, he didn't even say it was about the baby, he just pulled us aside and said, by the way, don't worry. Sister's name, is going to be fine, she will walk, just get a second opinion. We had no idea what or who he was talking about, they hadn't even named her yet, and he gave no indication it was about her. For all we knew, he mixed us up with someone else and was just an old, crazy guy. Months go by, she's born, and they name her. Yeah, maybe it was a coincidence or his influence that they named her that, but the weird thing was that doctors said she would never walk and would be in a special hip or leg brace for life. They started fitting her as a baby for her first one. The guy stopped by and said, I told you, get a second opinion, and sure enough, the second doctor knew exactly what the problem was, did a minor corrective procedure, and she has never worn a brace. She walked on time, she is in her 20s and jogs daily, she works out a ton, etc. I was driving back from university with my mom. We had taken this trip millions of times and never had any issues, but this time whilst we were driving, we hit a time bubble, the best way I could think of to describe it. The road had completely changed, it was pitch black, no lights, no sign of life, the road markers were gone, and the road signs that were there had been blacked out, like they did in World War II in case of invasion. Even the smell of the area was different, and a mass amount of fog appeared. It felt so calm no matter which direction we drove in, we ended up at the same junction. Hours we were driving around this same spot until suddenly the last time we exited the junction and there were lights, cars, etc. I cannot explain it, and when we talk about it, it seems even more insane. We looked at the clock and only minutes had passed, but the mileage records on my car said we traveled about 60 miles. I've never in my life felt more confused, and each time we brought it up, people just laughed, saying we were crazy. I never drove that way again. I would sleepwalk when I was a child, but I was also a paperboy. One morning I woke up miles away from my house en route. I woke up under a pile of leaves, in the back of a random house. I was in my paperboy gear but had no clue as how I got to that location. It was 8 o'clock, and I had missed my school bus. But when I went back home, my entire route was completed, 
My route was on my street. How did I end up blocks away from where I would normally go? Did I do my entire route asleep? I told no one, as a kid, I was terrified. A couple weeks later, I woke up inside an ambulance strapped to a gurney while being injected with what felt like battery acid pumping into my veins. It was a living nightmare. What the hell was going on? Then I saw my dad, it was Sunday, and he always helped me because the papers were huge that day. His facial expression was one of fright and terror, but he was relieved to see me audible. He came up to me and grabbed my hand and told me that I started screaming at the top of my lungs, staring at the sky in the middle of the street, fell to the ground, seizing for 10 minutes, and then passed out. Months of tests, EEGs, brain scans, you name it, showed nothing. It never happened again after that. I still don't know what was going on in my head to this day. I have had many strange things happen to me that I can't logically explain. I couldn't pick just one, so two of the weirdest, and scariest, would be. One, sorry if this is a bit long, for some background, when I was younger, around 16 to 17, I would spend most of my summer break at my grandparents' house, taking care of my great-grandma while they went out of town. She wasn't able to be left alone, and I loved spending time with her and helping her out. We would spend most of our time watching Ghost Hunters on Demand, since it was one of my favorite shows and she was always watching new shows with me. Throughout the show, she would comment on everything. Look, they found a ghostie. But she was always skeptical at the end, saying, that couldn't happen, ghosts aren't real. When you die, that's it. You just go to heaven. I would always reply, well, grandma, how would you know that? You're still alive. To that, she'd say, well, when I die, I'll let you know. So, about two years later, in 2011, while I was home from college for Thanksgiving break, my great-grandma passed away at the age of 93. I was heartbroken. After her funeral, I went back to school and tried to carry on the best that I could. About a month later, I was watching TV in my dorm room. My roommate and my suitmate had all gone home for the weekend, and I stayed to take advantage of the silence. I had been channel surfing for most of the night and came across a show about ghost hunting. I watched it for a bit and decided to change the channel. But the remote had suddenly stopped working. I replaced the batteries and the remote with brand new ones, straight out of the box. It wouldn't work. Finally, I decided to unplug the TV. Oddly enough, the TV was still on. At this, I suddenly felt a chill down my spine, and the hanging blinds, which were drawn closed with the windows closed and locked, began to ripple and move. Mind you, everything in the room was shut and locked up tight. Nothing could have made these blinds move like that. I was standing in the middle of the room, a bit scared at all this, but I also felt an overwhelming sense of comfort and familiarity. Grandma, I said, while holding back tears, I know it's you. Thank you for letting me know you're here, but you're kind of scaring me. Can you please stop? And suddenly, everything stopped. The blinds were still, and the TV was shut off. Nothing like that ever happened again in that room. About a year later, I switched schools and moved in with my grandparents. I slept in my great-grandma's old room, and at night I would hear her say, Angel, in my ear. While I was half asleep, I could feel her hand stroking my hair, and I would feel so safe and comforted. My ghost hunter's loving great-grandma visited me in my dorm a month after she passed and occasionally would visit me in my sleep when I moved in with my grandparents. 2. This is an ongoing story, so if anything new happens, I will update. In July of 2020, I started working at the gift shop at an old copper mine. During the tourist, spring-slash-summer-slash-fall, season, we're pretty busy, even with the coronavirus. But during the winter season, it's pretty dead. Most days, it's just me doing inventory, taking care of online orders, and updating the website. So, on one of these days, when the sun goes down at 4 p.m., I am working on getting ready for inventory, organizing things, and moving stuff around. Usually, I don't stay past 5 p.m. since it just gives me the creeps to be here all alone at night, but this night, I was feeling pretty brave, telling myself that I'd stay until 6.30 p.m. this time in order to get stuff done. Shortly after this out loud remark, I hear creaking overhead and proceed to blame it on the wind. About five minutes later, a loud thump startled me from my work, and I instinctively looked up to where the sound came from. Two seconds later, I hear loud footsteps, like someone with work boots walking around above me. I checked the door to the upstairs directly behind me, and it was locked from my side. No one could have gotten up there and locked the door behind them, and I was the only one with a key who could get into the building. Suddenly, I could hear men's voices above me, and then a man's laugh. I decided that I wasn't staying until 6.30 p.m. and left rather quickly. I yelled, have a good night, guys. Sorry to bother you. And locked up. 
I've taken some advice from people I've told that I should acknowledge them and just be nice to them. So now, I yell good morning, fellas. When I walk in and great job today, guys. See you tomorrow. At night, when I leave, I've noticed that it's not as active, and I don't feel like something's out to get me. And, when I hear voices or thumps, I just yell, try to keep it down up there. And it goes away. One time my art teacher comes in and he's wearing this cool shirt that was dark blue button down, and it had realistic lobsters on it that were salting fries. This is a very specific and excellent piece. My friend and I asked him where he got it, and he said he got it many years ago at some boutique store on an Indian reserve, and my friend and I were disappointed that we would never own the same shirt. We went to Ross later that day, and lo and behold, there were exactly two shirts left of the same design and print, and my friend and I purchased them. We would occasionally coordinate to wear it on the days we'd predict our art teacher would wear it, and it would be a good laugh. He was disappointed that he paid like seven times the price for it at a boutique store on an Indian reservation. Anyway, fast forward two years later, and my friend and I had transferred to a new college, and one day, without coordinating, we both happened to show up wearing the same lobster shirt. We were sitting and chatting in a cafe when a guy we'd never seen before came in through the door, wearing the exact same, very specific lobster shirt. He spots us from across the room, obviously stupefied. He just says nice shirt. That same day, my friend and I walked to class, and somehow, for some reason, our art teacher from our previous college was visiting this campus wearing the lobster shirt. I was working at my first job, the equivalent of Best Buy, Canadians remember Future Shop? In the music slash games department. I got to know the warehouse crew fairly well, as I spent a lot of time in the back receiving games, pricing them, and getting them out on the shelves. One night I had a dream. I was working overnight as a warehouse employee accepting shipment in the back when we heard noises coming from the front of the store. Some people broke in and started stealing stuff. They noticed us and started shooting guns wildly at us to scare us. I got hit and fell over, and I started to lose consciousness when I woke from the dream. When I went to work that morning, I got pulled into the office and was offered a job as the warehouse manager, the current one wanted to change roles and recommended me. The pay increase wasn't worth the crappier hours, but also f that. The timing of the dream was just too much. At school in the UK, we have a two-week work experience. I worked in a clothing store in the middle of town about 13 years ago. I had 30 minutes for dinner and decided to go to the chippy, which is only 160 yards away, it literally only takes two minutes to walk there. I always had dinner at half 12. So I walked there, the traffic light might have been red, so I'll add one minute, it takes, say, a maximum of five minutes to get the chips, I remember they were already made, so they just need bagging up and no queue, then let's say another three minutes walking back again. I had 19 minutes left to eat. So I start eating my chips in the staff room and decide to look at my phone, it was already 12.58. I had to shove a few handfuls of chips in my mouth and get back to work. Where did I lose 17 minutes? Was I staring into space, unaware? Did I read the clocks wrong? It was only a small amount of time, but I kept track of time the whole way because I hate being late and like to stick to a routine. I was already uneasy because I don't like to do something different. What did I do in almost 20 minutes that I don't remember? I went to my son's grave to put flowers. He died when he was 30. From where I parked my car, his grave is less than 6 feet away. I went to my car to leave and found I had locked my keys in it, so I thought I walked up and down my son's grave with no keys. I called my daughter to get my spare key, but when I unlocked the door, no keys were found. I checked the trash three times, and my daughter checked the trash twice. The caretaker checked the trash twice and even emptied the trash on the ground, but there were still no keys. I had to have a duplicate key made. Where my son is buried, his grandma, my ex-mother-in-law, is buried further up. Further down, an ex-boyfriend's mother is buried. I never got along with either one of them. Next time I go and visit my son's grave, I make sure I hang on to my keys. I'm talking to my son's grave and saying, I wonder if any of those two bitches took my keys. Loud and clear, like he was still alive, I hear my son's voice say, Mom. I caught the drift, he wanted me to forgive them. My old roommate and I befriended a ghost. I was never a huge believer in them. Yes, they could exist, it wouldn't be that wild, but I wasn't convinced. I moved into a sketchy apartment that no one wanted to live in. I paid almost nothing for it. It turns out a dude died in it in 2014. I didn't think anything of it until little stuff started happening. I have a habit of oversleeping and being late for work at least once a week. I'm a heavy sleeper, I can't help it. I've tried literally everything. A few weeks into living here, whenever I'd sleep in too much, something would fall off my desk. 
Every time. I talked to my roommate, and she said her LED lights kept changing to green on their own. I figured they were just faulty, but with my suicidal desk objects, we decided to keep an eye out for other weird things. After a few more instances, we finally decided we might have a ghost. I swear to God that dude was so happy to be noticed. We'd complain about not being able to find something, tear apart the house, and a few minutes later it'd be sitting on one of our beds. We'd come home, and the TV would be on for some kind of sports game. My medications were always waiting right on the edge of the counter each morning, no matter how many times I'd forget them in my bag or some other part of the house. After a while, we just started turning the lights green and putting a football game on when we left the house for him. If we forgot too many times, a phone charger or a vape would disappear until we apologized. My roommate and I went our separate ways a while ago and left that apartment. I hope the new owners are nice to him. I guess I can explain it. I just like talking about our ghost friend. I was in Iraq in 2007 as an ob mechanic. Back then, there weren't fancy armored glass kits, so we made some HMMWV windows to act as protection for the driver and troop commander seats. I was in the troop commander seat since we didn't have troops mounted up, and it was right behind the driver. We were on a dirt road, and I was sitting up out of the vehicle at about stomach height, mainly overconfident in said patch job windows, when out of nowhere I got the feeling that it wasn't a good idea. As soon as I clicked the seat down to the lowest position so that only my head was out of the vehicle, we hit an eyed. It completely shredded the armor on the side of the vehicle, and we never found the window. So instead of possibly being dead from losing an arm or worse, I only got a busted eardrum out of the deal. I also hit an eye a week later and a third one a month after the first one, but I didn't sense those. Maybe because I wasn't near the impact of those two? Who knows? I always have major deja vu, and it's not because I've seen certain things before, I've dreamed about them. To explain, when I first started dating my boyfriend, I had a dream that I was in his parents' house, sitting on their couch, talking to his mom while looking at their house plant. I hadn't met his mom yet, I hadn't even been to his parents' house, and yet five months later, I'm experiencing that same dream in real life. Everyone is wearing the same clothes, everything in the room was the same, and we were even talking about the same thing. Whenever this happens, I get this powerful feeling all over my body, and I immediately know that I've had a dream about this way before it even happened. And there's been a lot of instances where I've dreamt about me being somewhere and in a situation, and a few months later it happens. I don't know what this is or if I'm some kind of psychic. I wish I was making this up, because it honestly freaks me out sometimes. And everyone I've told about this thing looks at me like I'm crazy. My boyfriend believes me because I've told him about a dream, and then later it happens, and he's like I remember you telling me about that. If anyone knows what this is or has experienced it themselves multiple times, please let me know, because I feel like a crazy person. Around the time I was in middle school, I went to a friend's house to hang out, and their mother pulled out a Ouija board, this particular one was marketed towards speaking with angels, for us to use for fun. There were about five or six of us using it and asking it various questions, and when it was my turn, I chose to see if I could speak with my father, who had passed some years prior. I decided to ask questions that no one else in the room could possibly know, and the board gave the correct answer every time. I'm not religious in the slightest and have a more than healthy level of skepticism, and the same could be said when I was that age as well. So I decided to remove my hand from the board because I knew it was possible that I could be subconsciously moving it to the right place. I keep asking it a couple more questions, and it keeps giving the correct answer. So I'm pretty freaked out at this point and choose to try to rationalize what happened in my head. The next kid starts asking questions about one of his dead relatives, and it tells him a detail about their death that he didn't know but sounded pretty plausible, at least he seemed to think so as he locked himself into a bedroom after that in hysterics. I don't know what happened in that house to this day, but it was the closest I've ever come to what I would call a supernatural experience. I swear on my mother's grave and my future children's graves that this happened. When I was around the age of 16, me and my younger sister, 12, were sitting at the dinner table alone. My mom had just left the house after she had served us our dinner. She served us fish, something we really hated. We were sitting at the table just miserably staring at our food, not talking and reluctant to eat but knowing we had to or else our mother would get angry at us. It was a small square table near the entrance of our apartment, and my sister was sitting to the left of me. Across from me was an empty chair. All of a sudden, the chair across the table from me started rocking back and forth, pivoting from the back two legs of the chair. I initially thought that my sister was rocking the chair with her foot, it was the only logical explanation. I turned to my left to see if I noticed any movement from my sister. She's just staring at me with a serious expression and is still as rock, there is absolutely no movement from her. The chair, however, is still rocking. 
It doesn't get more cliche than this, but I got up and started to lean down to see what was moving the chair, and of course, the chair stopped moving. I have asked my sister every year since then if she was lying about not rocking the chair, and she has not gone back on her word to this day. So ghosts exist, I guess. This happened last summer. An old friend came to town, and he gave me a call and asked to meet for lunch the next day. When we had lunch the following afternoon, he asked about a mutual friend of ours and whether I knew how to reach him. I told him no and that I hadn't seen or spoken to that guy in eight years. When I got home that night, I decided to look for him. I tried every number I had, including his sister and brother, but nothing came up. I then tried the internet. I looked on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, but nothing came up. I tried a thorough Google search, but nothing came up either. It was like he fell off the face of the earth. I began to wonder if he had died in those eight years, and word of his death just never spread. The next day, I went downtown to run some errands. As I'm crossing the street, I hear someone shout my name. I looked around, trying to connect a face to the voice, and there he was. The guy I hadn't seen in eight years, the guy I had spent the previous night searching for to no avail. It was strange, to say the least, and the only time I had an experience that left me feeling like there's something more happening in life than meets the eye. We are more connected than we know and can feel each other's thoughts and emotions. Or maybe it's just truly random crap that happens from time to time. I was in the military, and we made enemy contact on the side of a major highway that ran through the whole country. There was a convoy being attacked, so we went to help and took up positions on the east side of the highway, using a dried up canal bank as cover. My HMMV was equipped with A.50 caliber and Enlora's thermal image surveillance device. Our platoon took up our positions and fired on the enemy. Our fire devastated these dudes. Not to be graphic, but we observed these dudes literally falling apart in the thermal imaging. It was nighttime, and the call was made that we had to wait until first light to do the battle damage assessment due to these particular insurgents booby trapping their positions with mines and IEDs. The thought was that we could see better in the morning, see trip wires, disturbed earth, and pressure plates better, and avoid any possible traps. We overwatched the enemy's positions all night, and not a thing moved or was seen until dawn. We loaded up and went to assess the area. When we got there, there were no bodies, no shell casings, and not a drop of blood anywhere. It made the hair on my neck stand up. We had watched their bodies basically explode that night, and there was no trace anyone had been there at all besides some water bottles and cigarette butts. Now, they did have a concealed route to the position we were not aware of until dawn, and this particular group of insurgents was known to collect their dead to avoid us finding them and for superstitious reasons, but damn. There is not a drop of blood anywhere. That particular event was the eeriest, and it has stuck with me ever since. It was in 2006. In 2017, I was in a very low place. I was caught in a very toxic and abusive marriage, and it was slowly killing me and our daughter. I knew we were going to leave, but we were not sure how. My mom loaned me some money for the down payment, and I knew those payments would be next to impossible to cover. I put an offer in on a condo without seeing it, I trusted the agent, and it was accepted. I got a job offer in another city, across the country. I knew we could make the move, but I was so worried about money and supporting my daughter and me. Then I had a dream. I dreamed about my uncle, who had passed away a year earlier. He came to me and hugged me and told me it would be okay, that money would be taken care of, and to make the move because it was the right thing and things would work out. We packed up my jeep with two dogs, a cat, my daughter, me, and our personal luggage and drove across the country. Two months after we got there, a settlement suddenly came through and paid everything off. Then this past year, when I realized I needed to make a career change, I got another influx, paid off my car, and have enough for Reynos and a trip we are planning for 2022. My career change will be totally paid for, and I have a nice amount in savings to pay for my daughter's university. Everything just fell into place so perfectly, beyond my wildest dreams. When I was around 8 years old, my family was in Pensacola, Florida, visiting. We always went to parks, and along the beach there was a federal park that was also once used by either the Coast Guard or Navy for spotting you boats in World War II. Periodically, as we were driving through the park, we saw these bunkers in the sand dunes, some of them had large, you could drive a truck in them, sealed off entrances. We eventually ran across one where the entrance was not sealed off, and we stopped to explore. As you stood at the entrance, you could hear other voices and sounds, so clearly there was some tunnel connectivity between all of them. My older sister and I walked down the pitch black tunnel to explore it until my parents finished getting my younger, i.e., babies, siblings out. We stopped oddly, and then my sister turned to go back. 
This was the first strange thing, why did we stop exactly where we did? You see, my sister walked back, but I decided to go forward deeper, and literally, my next step was to fall down a big vertical shaft. Strange number two was that I suddenly caught on to something because the shaft went much deeper. I could hear voices way deeper coming from down the shaft. There was no bottom under me, nor was there anything sticking out, but I was caught. My sister yelled, and my dad ran down the tunnel to the shaft, where it was now apparent that a thin piece of sheet metal had been placed over it that had collapsed. He could not see me, but I could see him. He was literally freaking out and calling for me when I called back. He laid flat and tried to reach down to get me. I reached up but could not reach him. He told my mom to hold his legs as he leaned deeper into the shaft, but still, no bueno. He told me to try to stand higher and reach him. I told him there was nothing under me but air. I reached as far up as I could, and my dad reached as far down, but it was like over a foot or more between our hands. Really strange thing number three, as we did so, I felt something envelop me. Very strangely around my body but very carefully and comfortably, and it just pushed me up. It pushed me up to where I could grab my father's hand. Now many of you may question the last, but that is the best way to describe what I experienced. To further that, I could not have stood anyway because my leg was broken, more on that in a second. And furthermore, as they were putting me in the car, I heard my dad nearly break out in tears, telling my mom that he thought I was going to be lost because, as best he could tell, there was nothing holding me, and his hand was too far away for him to have reached me. He told her he had no idea how I reached his hand. Strange number 4. Later at the ER, when the doctor went to examine my leg, he pulled off my jeans to discover a perfectly round, about three quarters of an inch circular stab wound into my leg. At first, the doctor thought the broken bone must have created it because there was no hole in my pants and no scratches up my leg, like something had gone up my pants leg and poked me. Later, the doctor was completely perplexed because the bone was totally stable, and at the first x-ray reading, it was only a hairline fracture they missed, so it could not have poked through my leg. Needless to say, all of it freaked everyone out. I still have the puncture wound scar, one of the few my body has kept as I heal very well and rarely scar. Later, the park ranger told my parents that those vertical shafts, on average, are well over 50 feet deep, some closer to 100, and are ventilated. They were smooth walls with no ladders or anything. He did not know how I would have fallen to the bottom. I am minding my own business. In come my parents. My mom hands me my dad's work calendar for the following year, one of those desktop calendars that stand up on their own as a triangle. Each month, there's a picture of a department's roster. Look at this, see if you notice anything weird. I start looking at the pictures, I see funny faces, weird fashion choices, celebrity resemblances, and we laugh. I get to a picture, stay at it for a few seconds, point at a guy, and say there's something wrong with him. Nothing notable, no signs of anything, just a normal man. My parents look at each other, WTF mode on. My mom, who always insists is a witch and that sort of crap, says, that's the guy I noticed, too. Dad says he died a couple weeks after that picture was taken. No previous ailments, no appearance of being sick, he just died, a stroke or something sudden like that. It still boggles me to this day. In 2005, I had just graduated from college and moved back to my hometown. My parents were going through a divorce, and we had moved my dad into a new house. My friend Chris, myself, and my father all went out of town and spent the weekend on his boat in Destin, Florida, for a fishing trip. When we came back into town, we were debating what to do for dinner as we were walking in the house. Since we were just in a car for six hours, no one wanted to pick up food. Less than a minute after we walked in, the doorbell rang, and two pizzas were delivered with my name on the receipt. I did a reverse lookup on the phone number on the receipt, and it was a town over, to a name that I did not know. Myself, Chris, and my dad were all in the same car, no one called the pizza place. I have never been able to explain who ordered the pizza, knew my dad's new address, knew that I was staying with him as the move had just happened the previous month, or knew we had just returned to town. It still bothers me to this day. A year ago, months before I met my best friend, I had a dream where I was on the step of a front door to a house. I opened the door and surveyed the first floor, walked to the left into the kitchen, and sat down at the table where rays of sunlight were coming through the blinds. Then I woke up and thought nothing of it. Months later, I was invited to attend a school event accompanied by a new friend I made that year, and we agreed we'd meet up at her cousin's house the night of. I get to the address, and at the step of the door, I get strong deja vu. I walk inside, being greeted by the cousin, my now best friend, 
and it is the same house I had dreamed I walked inside of months ago. We went up to her room to wait for the rest of the people to show up, so it wasn't exactly like the dream, almost the exact opposite. I had no idea what the cousin had looked like, and I barely knew her name, but somehow I managed to predict the future. I guess? I'm only 16, and I've never experienced anything like that before. Her and I talk about it all the time, and we can never figure out why I had that dream. We have similar beliefs about the afterlife, so somehow it feels meant to be. I don't know, but it was some trippy shit, man. I'd like to start this by stating that I don't believe in the supernatural. But once, when I was 16, I was at a sleepover at a friend's house, and at about 3 a.m. I got up to get myself a cup of water. My bud was half asleep, but I asked if he wanted one too, which he just kind of did the MHM sound to and then turned to face away from the door in bed. I got out the door, as the room was directly connected to the kitchen, grabbed two, two, cups, and filled them. As I now had both my hands full, I tried to whisper for him to open the door as others in the house were asleep. I saw his hand crawl around the edge of the very slightly open door, and the door started pulling into the room, but with closer inspection, the hand was completely blue tinted with very yellow nails and way skinnier than the hands of anyone in the house. I got into the room, not thinking too much of it, and it turned out he was completely asleep. He still turned away from the door, which didn't freak me out till the day after. I was 21 and really into primitive camping in 2015. I had taken a long trip to Daniel Boone National Forest in Kentucky in the spring. I had my bear collie with me, who loved the forest. We had been there more than 10 times for overnight trips at this point. After finding our normal place, we set out and hiked 10 miles, and we ran into a handful of people on the trail. We camped overnight. When we woke up, had breakfast, got packed up, and headed out, it was about noon. About an hour into our walk the second day, every sound stopped. And when I say sound stopped, I mean things were absolutely dead quiet. It was terrifying. I couldn't hear the wind, I couldn't hear water trickling by the stream, there were no birds. Nothing. My ears rang terribly because of the silence. I can't emphasize how terrified I was. I had never experienced anything like this. And then my border collie growled. I could hear the growl. It sounded so strange in the quiet. And at that point, I knew that it wasn't just my ears. I talked to my dog and tried to calm her down, and I could hear my voice. When I took a step, I would hear the step. It wasn't just me, it wasn't my ears. My dog was reacting too. After about 45 seconds, things returned to normal. Completely normal. The wind was there, and we could hear birds. The stream. Everything is completely normal. My dog and I hiked out and left immediately. I'm an avid hiker now and I'm constantly out on trails. Nothing close to this has ever happened again. I swear to God, I still have nightmares. I've never been back to that forest. There are two parts to this, shortened, story. I had been cooking breakfast in my in-law's guest house with my dog when he suddenly started barking at something in the corner of the room. Nothing was there. He started backing up, as if whatever he was barking at was coming closer to him. He was using his deep intimidation bark, which I had only heard a few times before. Tail tucked, totally freaked out. Knowing the house was originally built by the first owner, who died many years ago, everyone jokes about it being haunted. A friend claims he saw shadows during the months he lived there, and sometimes we hear footsteps while in the garage below. This is when I decided it was time to go. Friendly ghost or not, I was not about to stick around. My dog sprinted out of there as fast as he could, checking behind him on the way out. An hour later, I am exhausted and napping in the main house. I'm not sure how I began to lucid dream, as I have not really done it much in the past. At some point in my dream, I decided to go back into the guest house. As clear as day, I hear a man talking about the house. Just a normal conversation, almost like he was showing me around the house. I then get this feeling that something is lurking behind me. As I turn, I see this black, hunched figure, and at this point, I am freaked out. It jumps over the banister to the stairs, and I can hear the loud, heavy stomps down the stairs. I even felt the vibrations. It was so real. Needless to say, I did not go back to that place for a few days. Nothing like that has happened since, but I was really shaken up. I can't explain it. I had fallen out with my best friend from university for around 15 months. We both lived in the north of the UK, Manchester, at the time. I went to Paris for a holiday with my partner for a long weekend during that fallout and had not thought of him for a long time. On our way back to Manchester via train at London Euston, we stumbled across him in one of the carriages, and I was quite shocked. I told him to come sit next to us so we could catch up, etc., as the seat across the aisle from me seemed unoccupied. 
Around 15 minutes after the train had set off, the conductor came to check our tickets, and my mate said, oh, I better get to my seat, to which I said to come back after the check. He looked at his ticket, puzzled. I asked if there was something wrong, and he immediately told me to check my seat number. I showed it to him, and he showed mine. His seat number revealed that it was exactly beside mine, across the island. Just to put into context, there are trains from London to Manchester almost every 20 minutes, and there are at least around 10 carriages in each train. Our jaws dropped, and we sat in silence for a good two minutes. I realized then that we were meant to be in each other's lives, no matter our disagreements. He remains one of my best friends and family members to this day. I'm an atheist, so I'm an abnormally lucky guy, or somebody is watching out for me. Not one, not two, not three, but four times I had this urgency to go to an open area. If I were claustrophobic, I would understand it, but when I got to this open area, not one single building around me, a strong earthquake would hit the town. Puebla, 1998, 1999, and 2017, and Orizaba, 2015. The weird thing is, I don't live in those cities. Four times I've outrun a hurricane in Category 5 in a matter of hours. When I need something, I usually get it. You want to know how crazy it has become? Last year, due to COVID, the US consulate in Mexico stopped all work related to foreign visas. Without a visa, I couldn't work in the US, so I got dumped of that opportunity. Fast forward to September, and another chance is hitting my doorbell. Better salary, better conditions, just plain better, but since I didn't cancel my visa appointment, I had preference during the few three or four weeks the US consulate worked before having to shut down again. Everything was just one day to do, one day to wait for the interview, and one day to get the visa. From there, I can go on and on about losing bus tickets only to later see that bus was wrecked or hijacked, only studying the topics of a test was so common that my classmates were pending on what topics I ended up studying. Seriously, I'm a very lucky person. And before you ask, I have never lost on lotteries, scratches, or those kinds of things. Never. I have never won big but never lost, and I got the feeling I shouldn't keep trying. I can't honestly explain from where such good luck comes, and I know statistics, and I know chances are almost always in our favor. But seriously, I just have so much luck, which is just ridiculous. When I was in elementary school, spanning the time period of probably five or so whole years, I had a very common occurrence where I would wake up, walk to the kitchen for my breakfast, and out the corner of my eye I would see a shadowy, seemingly shapeless object shoot across my backyard at the speed of light. So fast that it was barely even a millisecond, it felt like. It was practically my morning ritual that I didn't even take into consideration anymore, like it was normal. Then one day, a couple years later, my neighbor friend, whose backyard is connected to mine, was hanging out with me, and she said, have you ever seen the thing that shoots across the yard at the speed of light? And I was frozen in shock that it wasn't a potential eye illusion or just something I would experience. Years later, as an adult, it freaks me out how abnormal that is, in retrospect. I wonder if I'm misremembering this or what, but this had me really confused. Must have been 15 years ago or so, around age 10. I was at summer camp, meal time, in line in the cafeteria. This kid walks up and cuts in front of me. I said, hey, don't cut me, etc. He turns around and immediately says, rock paper scissors. If I win, I stay, I said, uh, fine. The bargaining skills of a 10 year old, he wins. I say, best two out of three? He agrees with absolutely no resistance and wins again. Uh, best three of five? He wins again. Four out of seven? He wins again, with absolutely no apparent surprise. I got the feeling I could have played all day and he wouldn't have lost once, and that he somehow knew it. I gave up, and he kept the spot in front of me without any air of triumph or surprise, like he was just going through the motions required to take my spot in line. I wish I could make up a story as dumb as that. My husband used to play hockey, and his games were usually late. He would come home around midnight. On one of those nights, my son and I were in bed when I heard my husband's truck pull in. He dropped his keys outside of the door, he came inside the house and slammed the door so hard that the walls shook, so, not like him. I looked out the window, to make sure it really was him, and his truck wasn't there. I walked out of the bedroom, and I saw my son standing in front of his door with a baseball bat. He whispered, it's not dad. As we stood there frozen in fear, the TV came on full blast. I called 911 and was told that help was on its way. Finally, we see flashlights through the downstairs window and see two police officers walking the perimeter of the house. They knock on the door, and I let them in, 
and the first thing they ask is, why is the TV on so loud? I tell them the story, and they check every inch of the house, all the doors, deadbolts, and windows are locked, so they tell us there's no way this could have happened. They start looking at us like we made it up. I called my husband to come home since the officers had to leave, my son begged them to stay. As soon as they left, the dining room chandelier started flickering, and the lights turned off. We just sat there in fear until my husband got home. When we told my husband what happened, he immediately said, I guess if I turn the TV on, the volume will be all the way up. Yes. I turned the TV off instead of turning down the volume. I turned the TV on. The volume was almost all the way down. To this day, I have no idea what happened that night. But, I know, something was in our house. Not my own experience, but one a trusted friend of many years tells me about. It was after school, my sophomore year of high school. I got called into work for two hours but was originally planning on going for a pre-football game drive with my football friends, I recorded games for the team. My three closest friends and two other guys decided to go on this drive. I got a text right after I got off work that they were in a nasty car accident and the car had rolled three times into the ditch after being t-boned. All of my friends escaped with relatively minor injuries. Here's the kicker. In my town, there's this hill that leads out of town. None of my friends had seatbelts on at the top of this hill. Suddenly, one of my friends says he got a sudden urge to put on his seatbelt as soon as they hit the top of the hill and began their way down. He managed to convince all of the guys in the car to put on seatbelts by the time they reached the bottom of the maybe one eighth mile long hill, where the accident took place. The timing of this still blows my mind to this day. He tells me they all woke up hanging upside down in their seats, and he says there was no doubt they all would have died if they weren't wearing them. When I was like 12, I had to wear a retainer that I only ever took out when I ate or brushed my teeth. One night, after brushing my teeth, I put my retainer back in as usual and went to bed. I woke up very suddenly in the middle of the night and had a feeling that something was off. I put on my glasses and looked around in the room, but I couldn't put my finger on what it was. Then I realized that my retainer wasn't in my mouth. I searched everywhere in my bed, on the bedside table, etc., but could not find it. Eventually, I woke up my mom, and she helped me look. After like 15 minutes of both of us searching for my retainer and trying to come up with possible explanations, we gave up, and she went back to bed. Then I noticed it. On top of my wall-mounted shelf, that was out of reach unless I stood up on my bed. I called my mom back in, and she was as confused and freaked out as I was. There was no reason whatsoever that I would ever put it on my dusty-ass shelf in the most inconvenient, out-of-reach place. And also, why would I even remove it from my mouth, especially in the middle of the night? I it's a very minor thing, but it still has me confused to this day. My mate and I used to catch up once a week at a pub quiz in a small posh town in Buckinghamshire. It was a fairly relaxed quiz, and we mainly went down for a few pints and a chat on Thursday. One week, about 10 minutes before the start of the quiz, a smartly dressed middle-aged man came up to us, introduced himself, let's call him RR, and asked us if he could join. We said no problem, and he pulled up a seat. The first quiz question was what organ is protected by the pericardial sac? I'm no doctor, but remember thinking it must be the heart. No sooner had this thought come to mind than RR said, it's definitely the anus. Definitely. I was researching it last night. Speechless, my mate and I looked at each other across the table, wondering what we had gotten ourselves in for, and we probably should have just made a break for it there and then. Throughout the rest of the quiz, RR recounted a number of increasing weird stories and anecdotes, for example, a lengthy one about the fact that his brother is best friends with the Velcro family, and related his apparent attempts to create a TV game show. RR, I've come up with an idea for a game show, it's called Top of the House, Me, Oh, Okay, What is the Premise? RR, Dunno, But You Win a House, Worried About Issues I Might Get Into For Divulging This Prime Intellectual Property. Or, Imagine You Are a Camera. Just Sitting in a Bar. Watching People. That's the show. Just watch people at different points in their lives. And don't take any of those ideas, those are mine. But the part that makes this a truly odd story is that at the end of the quiz, RR asked if he could keep our answer sheet. We agreed, and he packed it in his little bag and went to the toilet. My friend and I decided that this was the time to make our break for it and head to another pub. We left and walked directly to another bar at the end of town. At pace. When we walked in, it was mobbed, so we walked to the back to find a place to sit. As we got through to the back, there was a table free, but as we got closer, we saw that there was a sheet of paper on it. Our answer sheet. We spun around and saw RR at the bar, talking to two similarly bewildered looking lads. 
Needless to say, we all but sprinted out of said bar, called it a night, and just went home. I have no idea how he got there before us. Terrifying. My older brother died in an accident when I was a sophomore in high school. About a week before he died, my friend invited me to his birthday party that Saturday. All of my friends were going, and I had no reason to not go, but I immediately told him I couldn't go because I had a family thing. I didn't even think twice about saying that, even though it was a lie at the time. Friday rolled around, and it was the homecoming dance at my school. I went with my group of friends, and as the dance was winding down, we started planning a sleepover to continue our fun. Out of nowhere, I told them I couldn't go because I had a family thing early the next morning. I loved sleepovers, and this was a newish friend group for me, so again, there was no logical reason for me to say no. My brother died around 2 a.m. on Saturday morning, and I was at home when we all found out around 7. I obviously didn't go to my friend's birthday that night. It was a comfort to be together as a family in mourning. That was 20 years ago, and it is still a vivid memory for me. I'm not even the slightest bit religious, and I don't generally believe in the supernatural, but I have no explanation for this. I was having a night terror, where something was hunting me in my room. My father was dead on the floor, and I was crying out, Daddy, Daddy, wake up, come back, Daddy, help me, I need help. This happened right after my father died of terminal cancer in my arms. I was basically having a PTSD episode, in an instant, suddenly it was all faded, and he was hugging me, crying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you, I'm sorry. My poor father didn't mean to traumatize me on his way out. The rest of that dream was him trying to make it up to me. We went across the world, to stores in Milan, restaurants in Paris. He said, I never got to buy you a prom dress, or, I'll never get to buy your wedding dress. Why don't you try on some for me? I tried on so many, including a wedding dress. He looked at it and said, he's not good enough. I didn't understand, but fast forward to early March of last year, my dad died in 2019. I broke up with my boyfriend and had another dream about my dad. He was saying, first heartbreaks the hardest, baby girl. I know I'm super late to the thread, but I'll tell this story I've told to other people, and I've never been able to find a single logical explanation. When I was around 7 or 8, I was playing with Hot Wheels on the linoleum floor in the kitchen. I was whipping my cars as hard as I could against the bottom of the cabinet so they would build up speed and slam into the wall between the kitchen and laundry room. One Hot Wheel I launched, however, pretty much disappeared when it hit the wall. I was watching it slide against the cabinets, and when it hit the wall, it was just gone. The laundry room door was closed. Our cabinets reached the floor. There's only one way into the kitchen. Me and my dad searched behind and under every piece of furniture and appliance in the house. We never found that hot wheel. There wasn't a hole in the wall or anything, it just vanished, and the only thing I can conclude from this is that a small portion of my kitchen was an invisible interdimensional portal, and I happened to break the barrier between worlds. I used to work as a mover and was moving this super old lady into a new old folks room. The other guy had just died, hence the freed up room. Well. I walk in at one point early on in the move with a single couch cushion in my hand. Lazy, I know, lol, it's just me and this creepy old lady. Her eyes look pure black, like she could die at any moment. Super weird. Anyway. I set the cushion in the middle of the table. Big table. Nothing else is on it. The cushion is square within the table, not hanging over the edges or anything. I do a 180 to go back to the truck, and then. Thump. I immediately look back and the couch cushion is flying upwards, spinning through the air. Again, it's just me and the old lady in there at that moment, and she was standing pretty far away against a wall. I was obviously shocked, but I managed to ask her what just happened. She just smiles at me and says, I don't know, that was weird, huh? There was nothing on or under the table. The table didn't move. There was nothing there that could have made that smacking sound and flipped the cushion in the air. The old lady was across the room, and I looked back instantly when I heard the cushion get hit. I guess it was the ghost of the guy who just died in there? I don't know. Both sides of my family are from New Jersey, and, growing up, we would regularly visit NYC while visiting cousins because it was so close. When I was about 5 years old, my parents were determined to drag around 3 kids, all under 12, to the most touristy spots in NYC. I remember the Empire State Building, the Statue of Liberty, Ellis Island, the Museum of Natural History, Times Square, the Naked Cowboy, etc. As the day was winding down, my parents wanted to give up on the last location and just head back to NJ. 
I threw an absolute fit because the next location was the one I really wanted to visit the most, and to be honest, I don't know why that is. My dad tried calming me down by saying something along the lines of, don't worry, we'll come back and it'll be there next year, to which I replied, no, dad, it won't, with the most serious look on my face. He and my mom laughed because it was a typical dumb kid thing to say. Of course, the Twin Towers would still be there, and I could visit the World Trade Center so many times in the coming years. Except it was August 2001. I can't explain why, if it was just kid stubbornness or not, but I was thoroughly convinced I would never have the chance to see this place again. I would have thought I dreamt up this memory if not for my family backing up my story. Of course, it was the world's worst case of coincidence, but it still freaks us out. I live in a small town. The nearest city for shopping and restaurants is about 25 miles away. I was on the way to town with my ex-girlfriend and my daughter to go hit the bookstores and stuff like we used to enjoy doing on the weekends before my ex left and covered everything up. Anyway, about halfway there, near a state park, up ahead, hovering maybe a hundred feet or less above the center of the road, just above the tree line, is a shiny metallic ball. I was staring at it, trying to figure out what it was, and not watching the road. I strayed too far to the side of the road, and those little groves made the tires go brrr. My ex says, babe, obviously trying to make it clear that she would like for me to not run us off the road. I looked down and straightened up the car, and I said, do you see that? She said, what? I looked back up to point it out, and there was nothing there. It was just gone. I still don't know what it was. It's 2008, I'm in my dorm room working on a paper and I've been pounding water and coffee. I have to pee but I'm in the zone. My sweet mate comes home from class. We mumble a greeting to each other, he enters his room, mills around, then leaves. Gotta pee, can't hold it anymore. Paper pause, I get up and go to the bathroom, passing my sweet mate's open bedroom door, and go into the bathroom. My brain is in full writing mode, I'm still on the page and I might as well be in a different universe. I close the bathroom door and lock it but my hand literally would not let go of the door handle, as if it wasn't mine to command. I come to realize that the hairs on my neck are standing. I really need to pee but there is this overwhelming sense of alarm. I reluctantly open the door that my hand was still attached to view a perfect line into my sweet mate's open room. It's on fire. Or at least his nightstand is. He had come home and lit a candle on his nightstand, not allowed. He then decided to head to the kitchen to make an afternoon snack and as he walked out of his room he took off his trucker cap and tossed it onto his nightstand. Directly onto a freshly lit scented candle, fellow smoked a lot. The plastic slash napalm hat was shooting a jet of flame at least a meter or yard up the wall, licking posters and a calendar. It looked like a textbook fire safety video. I threw the hat on the ground and stomped it out. I assumed the guy would come back soon and explain what happened, but he just didn't. I brought it up a couple of days later in the dining hall, and he was relieved to figure out why his hat was melted and smashed, it gave me enough time to walk through what had happened. What I can't explain is how my brain detected something outside of my extreme peripheral perception. It would have had to be done by hearing or smelling in a dorm hall that was bereft of pleasantness or quiet. This is also the only time I have had a hand deny me its function. I have had a couple other instances like this where I was overcome by a sudden and incapacitating sense of doom and something bad happened as a result, but they were both more abstract and had minimal physical effects. I am not an anxious or credulous individual, but this has always been something that fizzles in the back of my mind. I took a solo backpacking trip to Japan in 2018. During the first week of the trip, a group of travelers and myself decided to go and drink at one of the local karaoke bars. After approximately two hours of constant drinking and singing, we all left the place fairly drunk. We were all on the street when myself and a girl from the group decided that we needed to go to the toilet. We left the group that was congregating on the sidewalk and entered a building a block or two away. We caught an elevator up a few floors and were excited. As we were walking down these red corridors, we approached the entry of what seemed to be an old school Japanese gentleman's club. The tipsy Danish girl whom I was with walked straight on into the place, and I instantly got tingles in the back of my neck. Every single Japanese man there was looking at her as she strolled up to the bar. I felt something was off, grabbed her wrist, and swiftly pulled her out. We jogged out of that place and came to a set of fire stairs. We started to briskly walk down them while talking about that weird encounter. This is where it gets fucked. During our rush down the stairs, we went one floor lower than we should have and ended up in the basement. As I rounded the corner, I saw a man dressed in a SWAT uniform couching with his gun drawn, his back to us, in the room. I could count about three to four dead Japanese men riddled with bullet holes leaning up against pillars and on the floor. I grabbed my Danish friend and noped the fuck out of that place. 
Still, to this day, I don't know what the fuck I saw. Was it a snuff? Was it role play? I dunno. I was very drunk, but I also know what I saw. This isn't exactly a can't logically explain situation, more of a what are the odds? I worked as a photo technician in a pharmacy in college. One morning, a customer brings in a huge box of old slides from the 1970s or 1980s. They had to be processed one slide at a time, so even though they were just boring pictures of a family's vacation, they stuck in my mind, unlike most photos we printed. Especially one where the family was posed around a pretty distinct sign that said Welcome to New Mexico. Several hours later, a different customer brought in a roll of film to be developed. I was pretty blown away when the first few pictures were of her family standing in front of the exact same sign in New Mexico as the earlier customer. Two entirely different customers who probably lived in the same neighborhood decided to come into the exact same store on the exact same day to get pictures developed of the exact same vacation they took decades apart. Not really the most bizarre thing to ever happen, but interesting enough to break up a mundane shift in retail. I was living in this house alone for a few months. Every night at 10, I would hear cat toys, like the bells, and footsteps in the living room. I just always locked myself in the bedroom at night because of it. I, being a paranoid human, also made sure every door was locked and bolted every time I got in the house. One night I was getting ready for bed and went to the room, and I ended up hearing loud, heavy footsteps outside and what sounded like a door slam. I turned all the lights on to go check, the dog was still in the living room, and he was lying on the couch, staring at me as the front door was wide open. When I told you, I was freaked out. No one believed me about the noises or the door until my boyfriend spent the night one night and heard the footsteps and dog paws in the living room. Thinking it was my dog, he brushed it off until he realized he was asleep in bed beside us. It still freaks me out to this day. It's hard to pick the strangest, but there was the time a can of soda exploded and then didn't. I was working in my garden and had gotten myself a can of Coke Zero. I cracked it open on my way out the back door, took a few hearty chugs, and sat it on my small garden table I keep out by my raised beds. I got back to working in the garden. I have on wireless earbuds and am listening to a podcast as I work on cleaning the pumpkin patch of weeds. Out of the blue, I hear and practically feel a loud bang, to the point where I exclaim, what the fuck? And pull my earbuds out. I live in a rough neighborhood, there's been shootings and whatnot, so I kind of duck down and start looking around to get a feel for things. That's when I see it. My can of coke is knocked down to the ground and just spitting foamy coke everywhere. No way, that's the noise, right? But I run over and pick it up, with the logic being diet coke probably isn't even good for plants, and I wipe it clean and start looking it over, and I realize not only is it full, it's completely unopened. I know I opened it, I know I drank half of it, and I know moments before I had seen it laying on the ground, shooting coke up into the air. I even had to wipe it off. I have no idea what the bang was or how my open, spilled coke suddenly became full and unopened in my hands. When I was 17, I was at my friend's apartment building, which his parents owned. It was a pretty old building in the Pilsen neighborhood of Chicago, and according to his dad, it used to be owned by Al Capone, but I'm not sure how true that was. We had an apartment on the top floor that they let us use to just hang out, and it allowed us easy access to the attic, it had a lock, but we had a key, so we could go out to the roof and smoke cigarettes. One night, we were about to go up, but I had to pee, so I told him I'd meet him up there. After I was done, I went up the stairs to the attic portion that was connected to the roof. There were no lights, so we always used our phones to guide us. We had those old flip phones without lights, so you only had the light from the screen to help navigate the cluttered mess that was up there. As I made my way to the roof door, I saw a shadow pass by me. Now this wasn't like the shadow of something moving with the light of my phone, this shadow felt solid like a person. I followed the direction it went, thinking it was my friend. I kept saying that I knew it was him and to stop playing around. It passed me a few more times before heading to the other side of the attic, and that's when I heard my friend's voices from downstairs. He got a call from his girlfriend and was in another room talking to her the whole time. It really freaked me out, since I knew I was following something, so I basically jumped down the stairs. I told my friend what happened and that I did not want to go back up there, and he agreed, so we decided to go for a walk instead.